Thank you, Janelle. Our gospel reading comes from the first chapter, first verse of Mark's gospel. This is the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It began as the prophet Isaiah had written. God said, I will send my messenger ahead of you to open the way for you. Someone is shouting in the desert, get the road ready for the Lord. Make a straight path for him to travel. So John appeared in the desert, baptizing and preaching. Turn away from your sins and be baptized, he told the people, and God will forgive your sins. Many people from the province of Judea in the city of Jerusalem went out to hear John. They confessed their sins and he baptized them in the Jordan River. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. He announced to the people, the man who will come after me is much greater than I am. I am not good enough even to bend down and untie his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I love a good story. How about you? Well, you may be saying, yes, I love a good story, but that's such a big, ambiguous phrase. What do you mean exactly? Well, I mean it all. I mean the short little stories like a joke, like, did you hear about Sven and Oli driving down the road and Sven says to Oli, Oli, stick out your head and see if our turn signals are working. So Oli sticks out his head and says, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. That's all right, you get the idea. Um, sometimes it's a, a, a parable or a, a, a nursery tale. Something like Goldilocks and the Three Bears or Hansel and Gretel or Red Riding Hood. Stories that tell a true stories that are a little scary and yet have often surprising turns. Or, or maybe it's something like Aesop's fables. Uh, this time of year, I, I often remember this, the story of the ant and the grasshopper. You know, the ant, the industrious one that was storing up for winter, the grasshopper that was fiddling away its time, and uh, things didn't work out so well for the grasshopper. Stories are important. Uh, not just, you know, movies and novels, entertainments, uh, for entertainment's sake, but stories shape and form us. Um, I, I remember as a, a young person going to family gatherings, and again, this time of year, even though we're not, many of us, uh, able to gather with family and friends, we can remember the stories that would be told around the table. And you know, kids will often ask for the older people to repeat some of their favorites. Maybe it was the time the hogs got loose and chased grandma. Uh, maybe it was, uh, you know, an example of a, of a dark and hard time. Maybe a story from the Depression. Uh, I had relatives that served uh, during wartime, and we would hang on every word as if they told any of those stories. For my grandfather, it was very rare. He rarely talked about that. Stories are important, and they come in different shapes. Maybe you have a household where your refrigerator is festooned with photographs and magnets. My parents' home was that way, and when my kids would come to visit their grandparents, they would spend a lot of time looking over those photos, most of which they had seen countless times over and over again but it, it helped them place themselves in the history of the family. They could see themselves and their cousins when they were all younger. Now that my dad's been uh, gone since 2003, they can look at pictures of themselves with him. Uh, it helps form us and shape us, let us know who and whose we are. Well, I'm saying all of that because this gospel reading from Mark, the very first words from Mark's gospel, are important for us to take in. Yes, there's the whole bit about John the Baptist the stand-in for Elijah, if you will, a harbinger, uh, a herald, uh, a forerunner, all, all of those things. It's John the Baptist. Prepare the way of the Lord. 
uh, that's quoting from Isaiah and Exodus and Malachi all at once. Uh, Old Testament imagery, yes. Uh, John saying to prepare the way, and part of that is, is repentance, turning away from our sins, turning towards God. Yes, that's all important, but that's not what I want to focus on in this sermon. I want to focus on the first six words. Now, not in our Good News translation. I love the Good News translation, but I, I, I prefer other translations for this first verse. In the Greek, in the original text of this gospel in Mark, the very first word is a Greek word, arche. Arche, it means beginnings or the beginning. And it's the same word that the Greek version of the Old Testament uses to begin Genesis 1-1, arche. This is the beginning. In fact, the NRSV, our, our version that we use sometimes, the way it starts, Mark 1-1, again, translating from the Greek, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The beginning of of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the R.K. Now, the very next part about John the Baptist tells us that this has been in the works, right? God's activity, it, it goes back all the way to the very beginning of creation. God's promises, God's covenant, God's care for and rescuing of God's people. That's been ongoing. But there is a new beginning, the beginning of the good news, this good news is the word that, that Mark will use other places as gospel. It also had a connotation in its contemporary time of being glad tidings from a battlefield. You know, on a day when there wasn't mass media, to get a messenger from a battlefield, everyone's worried about what's going on, and glad tidings, things are going well. We're victorious. That, that hints at what a gospel is about. The good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The gospel writer of Mark is setting out, telling us a story that shapes us and forms us. And brothers and sisters in Christ, we need that story so much. The year 2020 has had some horrible things happen. I don't want to say it was a horrible, horrendous, nasty catastrophe of a year, because I know good things also happened during 2020. Couples were married, babies were born, people formed new relationships. There were people that still were able to advance in their careers. So you can't write off the whole year 2020, but it certainly has been problematic in many ways for many millions of people. The pandemic alone, the economic hardship, the racism that's happened. I'll tell you what scares me most about the year 2020 is the increasing indifference that most of us have had towards systemic injustice. Now, I'm not pointing fingers at anyone here. I'm just saying that as a culture, we all, I think, have become less sensitive to the injustices that happen, whether it's with uh, people seeking asylum, people seeking a, a equal wage or fair, you know, equal access to medical care, um, whatever the reasons why we have become less sensitive to those injustices. So that's why we need this story that shapes and forms us, this story that has a new beginning every day in our lives. I want to say this, God's story has a new beginning. How many new beginnings? As many new beginnings as each of you that are hear my voice. And I would even go further Every one of you has a new beginning every morning that you wake up. Or if you work night shift, maybe you wake up at a different time of the day. But anytime you wake up, you have a new beginning, a new way to live into this good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Through the waters of baptism, not the baptism of John the Baptist, but the baptism of Jesus Christ, the baptism that grafts you into the body of Christ, the church of earth, the baptism that endows you with the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, the giver of faith. That is the story that is yours. And every day we can renew our baptisms and live into those promises. 
This gospel of Mark is going to be full of Jesus almost as an action figure. Uh, you know, as very heroic in his uh, tussle, if you will, with the forces of evil, the forces that are arrayed against God. He casts out demons, he brings healing, he proclaims forgiveness, he raises people from the dead. He gives a foretaste of the feast to come. Some scholars talk about eschatological events, things that look beyond the horizon of time. With the feeding of the multitudes, there will come a time when God will feed everybody. There will come a time when God will defeat all evil. There will come a time when death will no more reign. And golly, right now we need that. We need that foretaste. We need that light. We need that hope. And it's found in this story of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, a story that is yours to live into. This story has a lot of beginnings, but this story has no ending. We're so used to, when we're called upon to write a story, tell a story, it's got a beginning, a middle, and end. I want to say in God's kingdom, it has lots of beginnings, it's always going on, so I suppose it has a middle for each of us in our lives, but it has no ending. Some of the imagery from the book of Revelation points to that. There is this river that flows from beneath the throne of the Lamb of God, and along its banks are trees with leaves for healing for all the nations. It's as if you and I, our destinies, are to be conjoined like tributaries running into a stream, being carried on to eternal life. Eternal, no ending. Oh Lord, come. Holy Spirit, come. Emmanuel, God with us. We need you. And I invite you, dear friends and fellow believers, to live into this life giving story of Jesus the Christ. God's son who brings healing on his wings, wonderful counselor, prince of peace. This story has your name in it. This story holds you in the loving hands of God. This story is a blessing for you. This story is a blessing for the world through you. We'll now listen to and join in singing our hymn of the day. <laughs>